It's been 10 years since the introduction of e-hailing in South Africa and while the benefits of the services have largely been felt, its introduction hasn't been without challenges. You know, from issues of safety for customers to drivers facing hostility with the taxi drivers and more, there's still a long way to go for e-hailing in South Africa. Bahai Tudumelan, good evening. My name is Tabo Molokwan. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight, we speak on the ongoing issues uh, of the e-hailing industry and seeking to find solutions to make the industry safer for all involved. Now joining us in studio this evening to unpack this is Militemba Mguni, who is the Secretary General of the e-hailing Partners Council. He is here with me uh, this evening. Militemba, thanks very much for taking the time. Good evening. Welcome to the show. Uh, good evening to you, Tabo, and to the viewers. Thank you for having me. Much appreciated. I, I, I want us to you know, start the conversation by just understanding what the organization is all about, the e-hailing Partners Council, and uh, what exactly do you do? Um, the e-hailing Partners Council represents the interest of owners, which uh, formerly are called operators, the drivers, and also the passengers. It represents their interest and protects them against all the ills that they are faced with. Mm. Yeah. Um, um, uh, maybe if you can just maybe delve deep into the current scope, you know, of the e-hailing industry and how generally it functions. Because, you know, when you speak of e-hailing, there's quite a lot of confusion. People don't understand which ones are you talking about. Are you talking about those cars that have signs with taxis on top, yes. or what is it that you are talking about? I, I think e-hailing is a modern uh, um, version of meter taxis. You would know that in the history, um, the meter taxis were hailed uh, either by hand or approach. But with e-hailing, it's whereby uh, um, a passenger connects uh, uh, with uh, 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 the, the cab through an application, which is now called e-hailing, standing for electronic uh, uh, hailing. Mm -hmm. so, so on this now part, there's an added factor, which is the app itself, which comes uh, 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 from a, a technology company uh, uh, that will develop the app. So now you've got a situation where there is passengers, there is drivers that are offering the service with the vehicles, then there is the, the, the app side. So we are representing the interest of the drivers and also of the passengers. I mean, on top of that, there is the issue of the, um, you know, National Land Transport Amendment Bill. Uh, I'm not sure how um, that does it work with e-hailing, because we know that obviously somewhere, somehow the routes and just the regulation in its entirety of uh, how things are conducted within uh, the, um, the, the the industry itself. How does it impact, uh, you know, on the e-hailing business? Uh, it, it, does it benefit you? Or is, it is harming the business itself, the act itself. Unfortunately, not much. You would take note that uh, the NLTA was formally prepared for. Uh, the meter taxes and uh, all the other existing uh, uh, transport services at the time. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at e-hailing, it's a new uh, a phenomenon which comes with a lot of uh, a different aspect from the, the traditional uh, 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 meter taxes. Now, the NLTA has to be amended. That's why you've had a lot of times where we are requesting for the amendment bill uh, to be gazetted so that it will accommodate the e-hailing and be able to regulate it adequately enough to make sure that the issues that you see currently uh, do not exist going forward. So we, we are still pushing uh, uh, hard for that uh, uh, um, amendment bill to be uh, promulgated into law so that it addresses a lot of issues. So what, where does it stand now? Is it, is it sitting in an office now in, 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 in Parliament? Uh, no one is doing anything about it. Um, are you getting support from, uh, you know, your counterparts in order to make sure that uh, actually this amendment bill is passed? We are actually aggrieved because this is a process that started in 2016. And when you look today, that's uh, six, seven years later, it has not 
uh, uh, been promulgated into law. And there were issues uh, where the president returned it um, uh, to the uh, uh, parliament. Now they are having another round of consultations which we've been participating last month. We made submissions. And from what we are told is that uh, by October uh, they should be done. So we are hoping that uh, the president by end of this year or the beginning of this year will be able to sign the bill into law. But are you confident that this will happen? I mean, we're talking about something that has been discussed back in 2016. And till today, it's sitting somewhere gathering dust and nothing is happening. I think they, there's been many um, issues around it, some that we might uh, um, see as excuses because uh, it has been shown with the history and the Uber leaks that uh, Whenever Uber penetrates a country, they make sure that uh, uh, policymakers ignore Uber. There is no regulation that takes place, which we suspect has been the issue why this regulation has, has taken uh, 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 so, so, so long. But we believe at this point in time, there is too much issues uh, for anyone to delay the process anymore. And we are hoping that this time around, uh, uh, it, it will be uh, definitely uh, be signed into law. I want us to pocket there. Let's take a quick breather. When we come back, we get into the challenges faced by the e-hailing industry in more detail. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We are still in conversation with the General Secretary of the E-Hailing Partners Council, Militembam Guni. Before the ad break, we got to know the council and what the organization is about, as well as the broader picture of the e-hailing industry. Now, we take a closer look at the challenges being faced by the industry and its workers. He's still here with me uh, this evening. Militemba, I mean, there's quite an, an array of issues when you speak about e hailing We've seen you over the years, we've seen you guys over the months protesting, you know, trying to get the message across. Maybe let's rather start with the challenges at present. What is currently happening? Um, well, there are a lot of challenges, but uh, at present, we've got the issue of crime. So we've got criminals that are hijacking drivers, um, criminals uh, that are um, attacking drivers, but also we've got an issue where uh, drivers are being attacked by our counterparts, either from the meter taxis or the minibus taxis. Uh, furthermore, we've got an issue of exploitation in which the working conditions within the platforms are very much dire. Uh, you'll find that um, there is no worker safety uh, within the platforms. The issue of, of, of crime that we are talking about, it is a result of lack of a, a vetting, whereby you sign up as a pass passenger. They need to take certain particulars so that they are able to trace a, 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 a you in ever something happens but that does not happen now it has become an easy target for criminals where they just sign up with a fake email fake number they request a car rob the driver and get away with the crime we are losing a lot of young people uh, a promising future uh, because of these crimes that are happening and the unfortunate part is that the culprits are not brought to to to, to book we've got also issues where there's persecution within the platforms mm. um, you know whenever you are having issues uh, with your employer there are uh, recourse processes that you go through to resolve the issues maybe before dismissal these are platforms that persecute you they just take you out um, uh, uh, without any hearing or any anything before, be before we get into that um you know i want to go back to the issue particularly of the challenges i mean you've highlighted something that sometimes your counterparts are the ones that are inflicting this on you guys um i mean recently we saw what was happening with the burning of of cars, of, of, of cars uh in, 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 in uh, you in know in, 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 in maponya you know other places uh, but the santaco the taxi body they have refuted that saying that these are just allegations there was also an issue of some kind of an agreement that um you know supposedly you guys had with the industry itself i mean they, the the taxi bodies that you're not going to operate for some time uh until issues are sorted out w what is currently happening 
Un unfortunately, that uh, agreement was not uh, based uh, on, on, on fair, uh, fair resolutions because firstly it infringes on the right of, of consumers, passengers in having a choice uh, of, of their uh, means of transport. But again, there are underlying issues where there is issue of lack of coexistence between the, the counterparts. And we've always insisted to the Department of Transport to have an ad hoc committee of all the stakeholders so that we iron out the issues, they can raise their issues. But right now they feel like they are not, uh, they are raising issues, they are not addressed. And hence the frustration uh, that they end up taking out on, on drivers. They also have got issues with the app companies themselves who are nowhere to be found and they end up attacking uh, uh, drivers uh, for those issues. I mean, you did highlight earlier on the issue of exploitation also within the uh, e-hailing business itself. You're saying that there's persecution, you know, uh, there, there are no proper procedures. That's what you wanted to say in terms of disciplinary procedures, you know, just uh, getting into those investigations before a decision can be made for a person to be removed from the on business the itself. Yes. How do you deal with that? Because obviously, Onboarding is a major problem for you guys since you are in South Africa and then these companies are either in the US or other places. Which, which, which is an issue, Tabi, uh, 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 so that a, a company can come and operate in our country and there is no one taking accountability. We are being point, pointed to, to Europe or, or America. I think that's something that should tell us that something is not normal. When a country comes and operates within the country, there should be measures to, to regulate that company so that it's accountable to the laws of the country. And that is part of what we are calling for. We've got an industry benchmark to say all the e-hailing companies, all the operators, drivers, uh, uh, for them to participate in the space, they must comply with these uh, requirements so that we eliminate the issue of lack of accountability, the issue of, of, of persecution that is there, the issue of crime that happens without a, 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 a recourse, all of these things are catered within the benchmark, which is what we are requesting the government to endorse and the app companies to comply with. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm just going to throw this one at you. What would you say to a person who would say that you knew what you were signing up for when you got into this business? Unfortunately, that's not the case. Um, look, in the beginning, things were completely different. All that is happening today, it's uh, different from what happened in the beginning. In the beginning, it was a business that promised accountability. The offices were there, the people to, to, to raise issues with. There were recourse processes. There was no persecution that you see now. Uh, in terms of compensation, the, 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 the wages uh, were sustainable. But that's not the case anymore. So people felt the security to invest and work in this business. We are talking about a lot of people that led, left their former uh, uh, jobs to come into this business only to realize that they have been scammed into something in a deeper hole that they struggled to get themselves out of. Mm. Um, let's now talk about the pricing. I mean, how does the pricing system work, including regulations and in cases if uh, one has a promo for customers? I mean, for, in for, for instance, what is the impact of these on the workers, you know, the people that are uh, driving this e-hailing cars and how much do they actually take home? Because you have, you know, complained that, look, this is not sustainable at the end of the day. Indeed. Indeed, um, look, if, if you've been using the service for some time, uh, you would agree with me that lately the service has become so poor, the vehicles are not on condition, the attitude of drivers is bad. These are the symptoms of an industry of drivers that are, um, are, are, are not happy because they are not earning well. This is an, uh, the, the conditions of vehicles because the drivers, the money that they are getting, they are not able to maintain these vehicles. Uh, uh, now, the pricing becomes an issue. There are two parts of pricing. So there is commission that is charged by the apps for operators to consume the app, to use the app. Then there is prices that is charged to passengers for using the services of e-hailers, which you and me would agree that it is the responsibilities 
of the apps to charge for the, 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 the for usage of the app which they are charging us which we are complaining about because they are charging us 25 percent which is not justified when you look at their running cost they are only using less than seven percent now coming to the price we are the people that bring the cars into the platform we service those cars car wash data we drive those cars everything all the running cost for a trip are accumulated by us but these are the people that take responsibility to charge the prices. That's where the tragedy is because they don't take this cost. That's why they put prices that are below cost. Hence, the drivers are not making profit. Let us take a quick breather. When we come back, we speak on the two-day march by the e-hailing partners council and what they hope to achieve. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We are almost at the end of the show, but we continue to speak of the challenges faced by the e-hailing industry with Mili Mguni, who is the Secretary General of the e-hailing Partners Council. He's still here with us. Uh, Mili before the ad break, um, you know, we spoke about the challenges that are faced by the industry itself. I want us to talk about the two-day march that you will be having, uh, you know, what are some of your concerns? I know you touched on some of those issues, um, you know, but just tell us more about the match. Where is it happening? And also, what is it, you know, that you're hoping to achieve with that? Uh, look, today we completed uh, the first part of the match. It is a two day match. Um, first day, we were taking our grievances to the um, office of the Premier, Banyaza Lisufi. And tomorrow we are going to the offices of Bolt and Uber, uh, which will be the, 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 the second day and the end of, of, our, of our protest. Um, today we had a successful march. We went and um, handed over the memorandum of grievances. Unfortunately, the premier was not there himself, but a representative was there and uh, committed and confirmed that a meeting will sit on Wednesday with the stakeholders uh, that are necessary for that meeting. Uh, mind you, one of the grievances that we have, uh, we are reporting the MEC of Transport to the Premier um, for not addressing the issues that have been raised. We had a meeting with the MEC, um, which was in January on the 15th. And in that meeting, that meeting was supposed to address the issue uh, of the infighting that is happening with the counterparts, the issue of the benchmark and the support that is needed with the e-hailing uh, to address the issues that are there. In that meeting, the MEC was not there. We had a delegation. They could not take any resolutions. We were told that within seven days, we will get resolutions when the MEC is briefed. To this day, we've never received those resolutions. We have requested for them, they've never came forth. From that meeting, we have promised follow-up meetings, they've never happened. So we are hoping that the Premier will call the MEC to book and uh, uh, the, the issues are addressed. But again, we've got issues with the Premier himself. Um, recently, you would have noticed that there is a deal that is signed with both Uber and Bolt, uh, with Bolt, which includes the Pachaj, and with Uber, it includes the, the scooters, which is part of his initiative of, of Nasispan. Um, when that deal, uh, we came to, to, to know of it, we made our uh, um, dissatisfaction to the Premier and said we would like to understand uh, this deal, why such a deal, and is there empowerment, because there are issues which are very much documented, including the Competition uh, Commission report, which had uh, damning evidence uh, and recommendations to government. How come such a deal? The, the Premier promised us a meeting, and weeks passed uh, without those meetings. So we were raising that issue again. And then when it comes to the app companies, we are saying to them they should uh, comply with the benchmark because the benchmark is going to address the issues that are there where they would claim that they don't have offices. The benchmark is saying each and 
every app company that's going to operate in the country. It should have a domicile office within South Africa. It should have means for passengers to make complaints and be responded by human beings than what we have now where you are responded by an AI. I mean, you did touch on the issue that you will be going to. I was about to ask because of if there's no domicile um, in terms of uh, where you're supposed to get your grievances uh, at, you're saying that you, you will be matching also to the uh, Bolt and Uber offices. Uh, who works there? What, what's happening there? Because you are matching, this is like, I don't know how many matches that you've had previously. And then it seems like nothing is happening. Um, now you're going to match again. And then what happens if nothing is happening? Because you're saying that the Premier, the MECs, it seems like uh, no one is interested in resolving this issue. Which is why we are suspicious of uh, what the Uber leaks revealed to say. Uh, the manner in which they operate, uh, it could be possible that uh, certain figures uh, within the government uh, might be in the pockets of these uh, uh, companies. And uh, it is made sure that they do not address the issues that are there. While you've mentioned the issue of domicile, it's safe to say that these companies are operating as scams. Um, as I speak to you, there are offices right now where cars are taken in to the platform. But when you want to address issues, they will claim that they don't have offices. But when you want to take your car to say, I want to sign up with Bolt, I want to sign up with Uber, there is an office where you sign up. But the very same people claim that we don't have an office. How is that possible? So, so these are the issues that, needs, that we want to expose with this, that whenever it's time to take responsibility, they stay away. In the interest of time, before I let you go, what happens now? Or what does this mean? for a customer like myself, for instance, if I am using uh, either of these services, are there transports available or for now they've been suspended? Unfortunately, you will be affected for these uh, uh, two days. Um, the transport, you, you wouldn't get it reliable as, as, as usual. But uh, once these issues are um, sorted, tomorrow is the last day, then it will be back to business as usual. But again, I need to conscientize uh, uh, passengers. All these issues that we are addressing are at the best interest of passengers as well. Because like I mentioned, the service is bad currently. It's because of these issues. And for them to be addressed so that you have a reliable transport, we have to go through this process, uh, 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 Tabis. Mili Temba, thanks very much for coming through. I hope that uh, we'll definitely engage uh, soon again. Much appreciated. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you. That was uh, Mili Temba Mguni, who is the Secretary General of the E-Hailing Partners Council, speaking on the current state of the e-hailing industry and highlighting how there is still much work that needs to be done to fix the current challenges faced by all in the sector we hope that um, there will be solutions in this regard well that's how we wrap it up for today's episode of soweto today remember we love hearing from you so please feel free to talk to us about this episode simply send us an email hit soweto today at soweto tv.co.za alternatively you can call or whatsapp us uh, at 081 531 8857 for myself tabo Mulukwan, and the rest of the team masi chaba kobola has your prime time news up next good night and thank you for watching